Hello, my name is Dr. Brian Lynch. In the next 10 minutes, I'd like to solve all the school problems or convince you that if we would pay attention to very basic emotional needs, we could be a long way towards doing that. I want to go to the basic issues and not rely on one hit wonders. I think these principles are teachable. Interest is very important here. We want to sustain a child's or a student's interest. We have many problems, many things that interrupt our interest being bullied, drugs, rudeness, sexual transmitted disease. In fact, I'm going to argue that these follow our confusion or our interruption. Where does the confusion come from? And what do we want to do? Well, of course, we want to sustain the interest again. I don't think we've ever really thought much about this simple concept that we're confused. We might think of confusion as the opposite of interest. And most importantly, in order to be confused, you first had to be interested. Let me explain. We're going along, being interested, in something. Something can be other, it can be neutral, it can be negative, can pass our threshold of interest and get in our way of what we were just doing. I often say crap happens. Confusion ensues. very bright doctor, uh, Dr. Donald Nathanson, summarized what we can do at this point in this way. He said we can run, try to run away from our problems, blame ourselves, blame someone else, or avoid. And here you can translate those generic activities into behaviors. Withdraw, attack self, avoid, attack other. And this includes the extremes of uh, school shootings, suicides. Because emotion can overwhelm us. What we want to do is get interested in the confusion instead of going away from the confusion. Instead of withdrawing, attacking, or avoiding. I suggest that we'd like to define what the confusion is. We were on the right track and now we're confused. Define the confusion, evaluate it, do something about it, moderate it, control it. Then we can feel good about it. So to emphasize, I put shame here as a cognate or a synonym for confusion. This may still seem strange, but we call this the compass of shame. Think about it. When you're happy or you're interested and someone interrupts you, what happens? I think this is a feeling of shame.
All of this is based on the work of Sylvan S. Tompkins, who was the mentor of Dr. Nathanson, and Dr. Nathanson was my mentor. Dr. Tompkins postulated that we have these nine innate or born with emotions. We don't learn these. Many psychologists still think we learn our emotions. He has much empirical proof that we don't. That we are born with it. There are other schools of thought, including Paul Ekman's, who was a colleague of uh, Tompkins, who varies somewhat from this list, but he too believes that we're born with these. Here, in order to withdraw or attack or avoid, of course, we would feel something when we're running away or avoiding. So any combination of, of feelings, usually the quote-unquote negative, would translate into a behavior. Again, we go back to our common terms for these behaviors, truancy, bullying, drug addiction, poor performance, trouble reading, learning disabilities. So what good is any of this? If we could just simply get people interested in this basic approach, I think we would make great strides. Simply realizing the emotion overwhelms and lambasts all of us. It gets in the way of our learning. If we're in this state, we see right here in this slide, we cannot learn. And children need help extracting themselves from that state. And the best time to do it is exactly when a problem occurs. Again, define, evaluate, moderate, and control the problem. We are interested in something, or to be precise in this theory, we are interested or happy about something, enjoying something, and something gets in our way. This something can be a stimulus from outside, or it can be even our own negative emotion. Actually, it could be another interest of ours, high anger, high fear, or a competing interest. This can cause shame and confusion. Now, if we have been brought up properly, acquired the habits, what habit? The habit of renewing our interests. Then we might go through this scenario of defining, evaluating, doing something about the problem and controlling the problem, and feeling pride instead of guilt from having withdrawn, from the problem, we attacked others or ourselves for the problem, or avoiding the problem. This has been only the basics of this theory. I invite you to delve into it in much greater depth. You can start by going to my website, brianlynchmd.com, and exploring the work of Donald Nathanson and Sylvan S. Tompkins. Again, my website is brianlynchmd.com. Thank you, and I hope this will be useful in many areas of your life, specifically in schools, for this presentation.